Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba <laughs> Good morning, evening, whatever time of day it is for you, Internet. Welcome to our video games portion of our Media in 1990 video review series. And today we are covering games we haven't covered in other videos from this year. The major releases, I should say, not all the others. Really just stuff that we know about because, you know, we were pretty young at this time and <laughs> there Speak were a for yourself. And there there were a lot of video game systems at the time. You know, in, in this generation there were still tons of companies making games consoles. So there's a lot that we didn't play. Now that I'm using a microphone, I could talk like this if I want to. But I won't. The Sega Game Gear was released. Super Famicom was released in Japan. It was not released in the US in 90. The Game Boy was the best selling system in the world at the time. And the Game Genie released for the NES, which is something that I still to this day use all the time because I don't care if I'm cheating at games. I just want to beat them. Did either of you ever play this? I have a vague memory of playing this in school, I think, but I can't, it's not coming to me real clearly. Yeah, it's it's by Sid Meier, who, the, the same guy who made Civilization. He's sort of a big mainstay of computer gaming. For the NES. This is also available on the Switch Virtual Console. Erica, you want to talk about this one? Only just to say that this was my first sort of Street Fighter Brawl style game, followed quickly after by Ninja Turtles. But I had fond memories of playing this because it made me feel like more of a tomboy, which I which I treasured at the ripe age of eight years old. Yeah, it's a pretty stereotypical story, like girlfriend gets kidnapped. And so it's a beat em up game that boyfriend and his brother have to go rescue her. It's fun, though. It was released in Japan in 88, and there was a huge ad campaign to try and convince Nintendo to bring it to the US because it had been in Japan for two years and they hadn't released it in the US yet. Erica and I have already reviewed this, so check the link if you want to watch our review of it. This is a Gundam-like run and gun. It's got some nice graphics in the opening and, and pretty great music. Uh, it's pretty interesting, but kind of confusing and kind of hard. Erica, this is the one where they drop you in that little mech and you're just like wandering around shooting things and you can't tell which thing you can shoot and which one you can't. Mm -hmm. Couldn't really figure out how to play it. It's on the Switch um, virtual console if anyone wants to check it out. I have still never played this. But when this was written about in Nintendo Power, it caused me so many make-believe games of pretending to be a ninja, like running around in the yard uh, or like at on the playground with my friends pretending we were ninjas. And it was Nintendo Power's write-up of this game that did that. I think this plays pretty much exactly like the first Ninja Gaiden, so it's very hard. It's another Tetris-like puzzle game. It's maybe my least favorite of them. Ramin, did you ever play this one? No. I think it's the kind of game that if I would try to go back and play now um, would be too hard for me because of a lot of quality of life differences in games today versus games of yesteryear, which I'll talk more about later with a game we're getting to. It's fine, but there are so many other puzzle games like it that are so much better. Which is an action RPG with experience and equipment. And it's actually really fun. And like, you can level up to make things easier. You can buy better equipment and stuff, but there are these bat enemies that are just impossible to hit in this game for me. Maybe it's easy for other people, but I had so much trouble with it. I kind of wish I could go further because it was interesting, but it just got to be too frustrating which was released on the Famicom and was very briefly released on the Switch as well. They ported it for the Switch, but only had it available for a couple months. So, you know, manufactured scarcity to keep the game expensive. Any thoughts on this one, Ramin? Well, I haven't played this one uh, for a similar reason and why I haven't played Ninja Gaiden, even though it's, well, Ninja Gaiden 2 or Ninja Gaiden, even though it's from um, a game series I've come to really love in my adulthood that I didn't play in my childhood. But... I do know a few things about this game sort of vicariously because I've played other games. This game is one of the hardest Fire Emblem games because of a lot of quality of life things that 
weren't there. Like the signature of the Fire Emblem series is strategic role playing, you know, on a grid based battlefield. But if units die, if like a character dies, they die. Like they're out of your army. And one of the things that I find difficult to play about the series is I don't want them to die. And if they do die, I can't just go back to before they died. I have to start the whole battle over. And when the point of a genre of gameplay is tactical challenge, that's a lot. Like when I say one battle, that could mean like a 45 minute to hour and a half battle that I, that you have to start over, you know, over and over every time someone dies. And in these old Fire Emblem games, someone could die if they hit you with a critical hit, you know, which is just a, a lucky draw for them, or they could die because you made a bad choice. And there are even other quality of life things that weren't in this game that are in new Fire Emblem games. Like on the grid, if you highlight a, uh, an enemy unit, you can see their range of movement. So you know where you should bring yours up to. In this old game, you had to find out by trial and error. Nothing was going to tell you. To me, those things alone stack up to something that I really just never want to play unless they do some kind of remaster that has the feature that changes a lot of this stuff, like highlighting those squares, or there's a rewind the clock mechanic in some of the more recent Fire Emblem games. That's really in the last like two or three. But without those features, I don't see myself playing this. However, it is noteworthy, even though it didn't really get good reviews, it's one of the first, maybe even the first, tactical role-playing game. It's hard to trace back that genre much earlier than this. Yeah, I think a lot of these early console games have such high difficulty for one of two or maybe both of these reasons. One, they were based on an arcade game, which was intentionally difficult to make you keep putting quarters in it. Or two, it's a more complicated game that wouldn't work in an arcade as well, like a Fire Emblem or something like that. But game can't be super long because the hardware can't support it. So they just increase the difficulty to make you play it for longer, stretching out the game length a different way but it is super frustrating yeah old games like that not as fun for me now fantasy star 3 is supposed to be like the bad one of the original four i don't know a whole lot about it but everyone loves one two and especially four and i've played four and i love four so yeah not three though i don't know anything about it which was released in 1990 in japan for the Famicom and then eventually for iOS, Android and Windows, but it didn't reach those other systems until much later. Um, it didn't reach the US until 2006. So that's a big gap of time that Japan had Final Fantasy III, but none of the rest of us did. I've already reviewed this one, short story. It's probably my least favorite Final Fantasy game. Less than Final Fantasy one? Yeah. This was a, an NES game and Hideo Kojima was not involved in the series creator. Kojima was not involved. So now it's not considered canon. Some other people just made it and put the Metal Gear name on it. So this is the ancient Chinese chess-like strategy game called Go, but with spot of 7-Up fame and cute animations. It's a fun little puzzle game that I had. Didn't hold my interest for too long, but if spot jumps over this like piece to another one he does like a pole vault and then like splats into the ground it's cute you know i think i remember a little of that i didn't have it but i, I have an image in my head of like it's played almost like on a checkerboard or a chessboard kind of deal right yeah there are a handful of other video games based on this ancient chinese game but this is the only one that i can remember of by name i think it's the same thing as othello if anyone mm -hmm. ever had that on an old computer or something like that i think that's the same game but I'm not positive. It is a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Erica and I played a little bit of this on the Switch Virtual Console. It's interesting, but I wanted more story and I really wanted a jump button. Yeah, that was frustrating. Ch -ch -ch Chip and Dale! I didn't actually play it. And you know, Chip and Dale was a cartoon I learned to appreciate more in my uh, older years than in as a child. I know that this video game was popular. A lot of people had it. It was kind of a big seller that summer, but I don't remember. I'm sure it must have been a side scroller, but I, I haven't played it myself. Yeah, it's a 
side-scrolling platformer with light action elements. The same company made this game and the Tailspin game and all of the other like Disney TV cartoon series games that came out. The Darkwing Duck was another one that they made. And they're all actually pretty good. They're all actually kind of difficult though. I, I was never very good at this one. It's neither about jazz nor about poop. It is a shoot 'em up uh, but instead of being like a plane or something, you're like a little person in a jetpack. And there are two playable characters, one named Arnold, the other named Sigourney, and they look just like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sigourney Weaver. Eric and I play, played a little bit of this one too. What were your thoughts on it? I felt like I was playing Double Dragon or Metal Gear, one of the ones that was very similar from around this era, except, yeah, with Arnold and Sigourney, which, yeah. you know, is entertaining for about two seconds, but... I didn't I didn't see much to kind of differentiate it from the other from the other games of the time. Yeah, pretty typical shoot 'em up except yeah, just not a plane, a person instead. This was a childhood favorite game of mine with music by Yoko Shimomura. It was one of her first, but not her first. So Adventures in the Magic Kingdom is like a mini game collection where you are a little child in the Magic Kingdom, and you're going to the different attractions, the different rides in the park, and they each have like a different mini game that you have to play, and you have to beat all of them in order to get the keys to the castle and meet Mickey. It's super cute, uh, but very difficult. I don't remember this soundtrack really standing out to me. I think Shimomura hadn't come into her brilliant powers yet. <laughs> now she's one of the best, <laughs> if not maybe the best video game composer working right now. Solstice is an isometric puzzle dungeon crawler platformer with light action elements. That's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. So the score for this game was composed by Tim Fullen, and I think that track, uh, that opening title track from Solstice, is the best track of any game on the NES, just because of the things he was able to do with it. So uh, I looked up Tim Fullen a little bit. He did a couple other huge games and is really highly recorded as a composer, but he has basically no music training. He went to music school for like a year and then dropped out and started composing games at like age 15 or something like that. He's English, so they, they, their system works a little bit differently from ours. It still wow. kind of amazes me that the NES was able to create those sounds. Because if we think about other NES soundtracks, that's nothing like that which has another excellent soundtrack by Tim Fullen. I don't know why the score for a Pictionary game needed to go that hard, but it did, and it's pretty cool. You know, if we had been old enough to go to a club in 1990, I feel like we'd have heard something exactly like that. That's a compliment. For the MXS2, I have no idea what that system even is, uh, but this one did involve Kojima, so this is the canon sequel to the original Metal Gear. If we're talking about Tetris-like puzzle games that do something interesting and do it well, I think Dr. Mario is the one. Like, this is maybe, outside of Tetris, the best Tetris-like game. Yeah, I agree. I would actually say that I enjoy this one better than Tetris, not just because of the characterization, but I think the gameplay of it is just a little more fun and amusing to me. Yeah, it, it's... <laughs> Also just, you know, cuter and more whimsical with the little, like, viruses that are cute little monsters. Mm -hmm. You could also say that a lot of the games that many of us might associate with Tetris, like the bubble games where you, like, shoot the bubble cannon onto the other bubbles and then, you know, you eliminate them. You could say that they owe just as much, maybe even more to Dr. Mario than the Tetris because the gameplay is a little more directly similar with like you know dr mario you're eliminating by sameness and through tetris you're eliminating just you know by row i've never played dr mario i've seen it played it, it does look very charming it's super fun also has a great soundtrack maybe not quite as good as tetris but i feel like you hear this one more and you know ramin hearing you say that makes me think i think dr mario was just a little more accessible than tetris especially if you wanted to play something more like if you wanted to jump into a more difficult level or if you're like i just want to like shoot some things or do something really easy for a while like you could kind of pick a little more with tetris you really had to start at the bottom and build up every time 
Yeah, you know, to some degree, I used to believe, and I think other people have said similar too, that like aesthetic is like the least important thing about a video game. And a lot of people, you know, will argue that the gameplay matters more. But I like, I like aesthetic. And I think that it's okay to like aesthetic. And you know, the 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 hardworking artists and graphic designers, and everybody else who made that aesthetic a thing deserve their fair share of praise. So here's to cute Tetris. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree, especially with like, you think about the series of Lego video games and movies that are so popular. They're extraordinarily well designed, but a lot of them are remakes of movies and older games that that are much more complex and different, but it's just a whole different aesthetic and it's very pleasing and fun. An action platform run and gun game. Um, it's got some really cool designs, but it's way too hard for me. It's for the NES, uh, but they have it as part of the Switch virtual NES console. This is basically just Ninja Gaiden again. It doesn't feel as responsive to play as Ninja Gaiden. The graphics are simultaneously better, less pixelated, but also less interesting. It's like it's it's a blander design, but everything kind of looks nicer. There's also things about it that in some ways make it feel easier, but also more difficult. Like the enemies themselves seem easier but some of the precision platforming required is more difficult. And when you have less control over the character as they jump, it's like, that feels like it's not my fault that I just fell in that pit. But if you're interested in playing another Ninja Gaiden, check out Shadow of the Ninja on NES. I had this and um, it's an action game with some driving sections. It's a fun idea for a game. Basically, like there's a case that you solve. You have to drive your little car to the scene of the crime and then like find evidence. When you're inside a building, it turns into a side scrolling platformer where you have to like search the building for clues or fight a boss or something. And the clues will tell you like, go talk to this person. Then you'll go back out to the map and look to see where that person is and drive your car there. The driving sections are top down while you're driving the your car there there could be other cars that show up and shoot you and so you got to like shoot them back or get out of the way or speed away or something yeah it's an interesting idea for a game a little difficult and doesn't it feels a little clunky but pretty cool in looking back at it like i can see how it's related to the series but it also doesn't seem to have anything about the series that are like the things i really love like, you know, being able to change your weapons out or um, I, I don't know, the the way I've seen him, his movement in that platformer, again, it's that quality of life, that way that old platformers play. I, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> um, and it's a little too hard for the wrong reasons for me. I've always thought the Mega Man NES games were really hard. I, I From what I understand, I don't, I've never even seen anyone play three, I don't think, but I think the original trilogy on the NS are very similar games. They basically just have different bosses. I think people's favorite tends to be Mega Man 2, if I'm not mistaken. If you know better than us, if you're a Mega Man fan, let us know in the comments. <laughs> this was also about the time, you know, basically after 3, Mega Man sort of became a bit of a cash cow after that, and we're just going to keep coming out with the similar games over and over because people will buy them, and of course they did. It was a while before they kind of hit their stride of, ooh, this is fun and interesting again. I think all of them are pretty well loved. Uh, this is a computer point and click adventure. <laughs> um, it seems really cute and really funny. So uh, it's one that I would be interested in checking out. There's a new one that just came out, like the third or fourth game in the series it just came out this year or last year, I think. So worth checking out if anyone likes point and click adventure games. These next few games are the games that released with the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom in Japan. So F-Zero is a racing game. Sort of the point of F-Zero is that they're all hover cars and so that traction on turns feels different. But this is where Captain Falcon comes from. Falcon Punch! But other than that, it's basically just a racing game. And there are so many that are better, but also there are so many that are worse. I love this game, but Erica and I already reviewed it. So we will move on. But it was the best selling game in Japan that year. I will just add that I used to play Super Mario World with my mom all the time, Aww. and she was terrible at it, but it is an excellent game, and she enjoyed it even though she was terrible at it. Um, so if my mom sees this, we should play again sometime.
Man, Ramin, that's impressive. I never, ever could get my mother to play a video game with me, ever. My mom was a really big Tetris and Dr. Mario fan, and she was really good at both of them. Yeah, that was my dad, but my mom, not a chance. My dad played golf games. It was released as an arcade game in 1989, but then in 1990, it came to home systems, a whole bunch of them, including the Genesis. And this is also on the Genesis Switch virtual console. Why do I always have trouble saying that? This is an action platformer and it looks really nice and it feels good to play, but it's difficult. It's a really anime looking game. It also is on the Switch Virtual Console for the NES. It's an isometric dungeon crawling action RPG, but then the battles take place one-on-one -on -one in like a first person view. And I cannot figure out how the battles work. I could not figure it out. It's like kind of cool, but way too hard. And it's one of those like one hit and you're dead type of games. So Star Tropics was released for the NES and is on the Switch Virtual Console. It is a Zelda-like top-down action RPG, but with jumping, and there's probably more puzzle solving. The action doesn't feel anywhere near as good as it does in any Zelda game. And I've heard people say forever that it's super difficult, but it didn't really seem that surmountably difficult to me, but I also didn't get super far, so I couldn't tell for sure. This is Saga 2 in Japan. I have played this game. I really enjoyed the world of this game. So the idea is that you are traveling in search of your long lost father across different worlds that are all connected to, for lack of a better way of explaining it to someone who hasn't played it, to like a tree of life. But it's in this weird outer space-like interdimensional place. The world is really cool and really built well built out because... Each of these other worlds that you visit all have their own crazy and interesting side stories and characters in them. But what was really frustrating about it is so much of the way that you develop your party's abilities is randomized or based on really finite resources. And it is a challenging game. It was a slog to play through when I was... God, I think it was like 10 or 11 when I played this. I would probably play some kind of remake that, again, improves some of the quality of life things about this. But uh, it is a game I would recommend if you ever happen upon it and are able to play it. Uh, it's it's a good time. In this series, you like choose your party before the game starts and you can make it like male or female or monster or human or robot or something like that. Yeah, but basically because of the way that the plot is structured, they're kind of just three faces who are traveling with you, you know? And because of the randomization of the benefits you get as you level up, it's really only beneficial to pick, I think it was robots was the best one, or mutants, it was one of those two. If you knew anything about how the mechanics worked, it was actually pretty limiting, even though I think it was kind of intended to be the opposite. This is released on the Switch as something you can download. It's not on the Virtual Console. I have not played it, but it seems interesting. It is a side-scrolling performer action game, but then it, um, between levels, there are the, these like Sim city esque city-building sections where you're playing as a little cherub angel helping a city grow by like directing resources to it. And then like monsters will show up to attack the city and you have to shoot them down. And then it goes to the next level where you're a human doing some action platforming, swimming, swinging a sword and stuff. It's supposed to be excellent, but I think it's made by Quintet, who are the people who made Illusion of Gaia, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't know if I would like it, but I know a lot of people love it. For Genesis, and it is also on the Switch, it's a really pretty looking anime looking game. It's another shmup, it's another shoot 'em up. And this one is tougher than many, but I love the little anime sequences at the beginning of the game and between levels. Erica, this is the one that you played for a while when I was watching you. It's it's tough. It is tough, but I, I liked it. I thought that with this style of fly through the air, top down kind of view, it's it's one of the ones that I was like, oh, I could play this for a while and try to get good at it. 
flight simulator game, but you have to you start by having to learn how to parachute out of the plane and then fly through rings and stuff oh, like that. Oh yeah, no, I did I did kind of like this one. That's that's been a while now. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's something about this kind of game. It's like it's both a puzzle and a sort of a, almost like you have to do a balancing act, a full body balancing act with your controller. I feel like I didn't see a lot that around this time that that played that way i liked that but yeah i did it did also kind of come a little naturally to me i think if i had struggled more i might have hated it more but i thought it was cool and the graphics were really good yeah it, it is a cool idea for a game but you and i couldn't get past the tutorial levels successfully so you didn't have to say that michael now it's now we have evidence of that fact it's interesting not for me it's on the switch virtual console for the nes if anyone wants to check it out though in 1990, the NES version of Dragon's Lair was released. This is an old game. It was originally an arcade game and a Laserdisc game that came out in 1983. It was made by Don Bluth. Time before time. Time guy. Yeah. It has animated sequences. It looks like a fully hand animated game and it's really hard, but I'm amazed that it can run at all on an NES. This is the version of this game that I had. So it came with Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt and this World Class Track Meet game. World Class Track Meet is one of the games that uses the power pad and you have to like run in place for the sprinting sections and like jump for the long jump and hurdles and stuff like that. I loved this game when I was really little. It's fun to get your zoomies out and play a video game at the same time. I just remember hating this game because I was so bad at it. It's nothing against Duck Hunt. I just remember playing with my friends who were so much better than me at it and getting so frustrated when I was a little kid that I would put the gun up to the screen and it would still, it would still miss. <laughs> it would still miss. So um, forget you, Duck Hunt. <laughs> you can't play with us, but good on you if you're good at Duck Hunt. You're not me. A dog that laughs at you. <laughs> the, the, only, dog. the only dog i don't like <laughs> it was released for the nes in 1990 i don't know when it was released for the arcade but this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up this one was always so much fun whenever i get to play it it's got the perfect nostalgia factor now because it was so true to the animated series it was hard as anything but it was it was always a good time and it, it was something you could play with a lot of different people because most people recognize Ninja Turtles, even if they weren't heavy gamers. Yeah, it's super fun. I always cheated with my Game Genie so I could get farther just because the game is super hard. But it's another one of those games that was an arcade game first, so that's why it's difficult. Well, that's it. Any general thoughts on any trends we're noticing or anything like that? Uh, lots of like firsts for their kind are still happening in this era of gaming. First, but also a lot of continuing series. A lot of numbered sequels are still happening at this point, but a lot of these new ideas are doing really well. And actually looking through this, a lot of the best, I'm not counting Mario 3 because that was really released in 88, but a lot of the best of these games are the ones that are not sequels. In 1990, we're still in the era that licensed games are still pretty good like Chippendale Rescue Rangers, when we get to like the Wii con generation, that's when the licensed games are just like shovelware that you buy in the bargain bin for $2 because it has SpongeBob on it. So I I'm interested to see now that all of the major players have their the newest versions of the console. Like Nintendo is always the last one in every generation to put out a console. So now that the Super Nintendo's out in 1990, the console wars are really heating up with the super nintendo we start to get into when games get really good that just might be me and my nostalgia for when i came of age I'm no sure. i think i think you're absolutely correct because we could do a whole episode on how the snes changed the game and how the sega genesis changed a lot of rules and you know it's going to be really interesting well i think then we're done so thank you so much everybody for watching if you have any other thoughts on any of these games or if there are any games that we missed that you think we should talk about let us know in the comments also go ahead and let us know if there's anything from 1991 
that you really want us to talk about. Can't guarantee that we'll be able to get access to any of these games, but we'll give it a shot. And um, yeah, give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a pity like if you hated it. If you're interested in what we do, give this channel a uh, subscribe. Give this channel a subscribe. What, what kind of language is that? Yeah, I think that's it. Maintain your groovy selves. See y'all next time. <laughs>